Welcome to Drone Law Pro Radio. Today we are here with Alan Perlman. And Alan is really one of the most innovative guys out there in terms of droning UAV. He's created some incredible resources on his website, uavcoach.com. And he's here today to talk about a new training program that he's put together for for folks who are, are entering into the drone and UAV space. Alan, how are you doing today? Doing great, Enrico. We got um, we got Thanksgiving coming up, and uh, I think I mentioned to you earlier. I'm down at the in-laws' place down in Atlanta, Georgia. Lots of open space down here, so I brought a couple of drones down with me and trying to get some footage of uh, of their house and uh, some great parks in the area too. Been doing a lot of flying, which has been nice. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, I'm bringing my drone down to the British Virgin Islands next week, and of course, I'm trying to figure out what all the laws are and regulations, mm-hmm. whether or not there are any flight restrictions. And it looks like I'm good to go, and I'm really excited to take some great footage uh, down in the British Virgin Islands. So you had to you had to one up me, you know, Atlanta, British Virgin Islands. I think you're winning so far. <laughs> uh, one point for Enrico so far. We'll we'll keep keep track at the end of the uh, interview and see where we are in points. But I think you're going to end up winning, Alan, because you've got this great training program program that you uh, that you see you're starting to offer and over the last couple of months we've really seen it start to get some good traction so uh, tell us a little bit about this training video series and how it came to be sure I think um, without getting too long-winded here I'll start at the beginning because I think my first interaction with uh, with a drone with a quadcopter is kind of where all of this began and um, this is about a year and a half ago. I uh, bought a DJI Phantom 1 for my cousin who officiated my wife and I's wedding. He's a big gadget geek. We wanted to get him you know, a nice present for officiating and leading our wedding ceremony. So I've got the big DJI Phantom 1 box. I walk it over to his apartment in Manhattan, New York City. Um, both of us have been flying remote control cars and boats and, and helicopters since we were kids. I thought that we would unbox this thing, plug it into the wall, charge it for 20 minutes, and turn it on, right? We opened the box. It took us 45 minutes to figure out how to put it together. The the instruction booklet was in broken English. The graphs were very difficult to read. Um, We didn't realize that we had to connect connect the battery in a certain way and then calibrate it. And we ended up pulling up these videos on YouTube to try and figure out how to do all of this safely. So we finally figured out. We take it downstairs. Um, I, bring the, I bring the DJI Phantom into the sky 10, 15 feet. Uh, 20 seconds later, I, I crash it into a parked car. And I was real shaken up. I'm a smart guy. How yeah. could I have let this happen? How did I lose control so easily? Fortunately, the drone was fine. The car was fine. It ran into the tire instead of any, any kind right. of uh, like actual body damage. But um, I went home that night, and I stayed up till 3 or 4 in the morning. Uh, reading about the drone industry and looking at videos on YouTube of other people crashing their drones into their garages and into their mailboxes and into trees. Yep. And I discovered pretty quickly that there's a really big disconnect. This, this UAV technology has advanced so much in the last few years, and it's a lot more accessible. You can go on Amazon, you can go on Banggood, you can walk into a Best Buy or your local hobby shop and buy technology that 10 years ago was only available to the military. And it's really amazing. You can take it home and you can, you, know, you can do what you want with it. But what's happening is a lot of people are doing that same thing that I did where they turn it on and they bring it into the air and they're not aware of, of safety considerations and rules and regulations and yeah. you know, learning basic multi-rotor orientation, which when it's, you know, when, when it's facing in front of you, it's pretty straightforward. But yeah. as soon as you turn it 90 degrees left or 90 degrees right, your brain starts playing tricks on you and, and it's pretty easy uh, to, to lose that drone. So that's why I started UAV Coach, is I sensed an opportunity to educate. I sensed an opportunity to train. Admittedly, I'm not a professional drone pilot and I try to be very transparent about that when I write content. But my goal is to distill all of the information that's happening in the industry into a really easily digestible format for new pilots, for people that just bought their $40 Hubson X4 quadcopter off of Amazon and yep. are thinking to themselves, wow, this is really cool. Maybe I want to make money with this someday, but for now I just need to learn how to fly and I'm going to do it in my, uh, in my backyard kind of a thing. So that's, that's kind of the basic uh, version of the story. Now, I put together this training course 
because my community asked for it. <laughs> I um, when people Let, let's just stop her there. You have a really large community that you've put together that uh, I know I get the emails in my inbox with the latest resources. And how big is your community right now? Yeah, so right now we've got about a little over 8,000. That's huge. Um, and, you know, not everybody's engaged, but we, we get really good email engagement. And um, I get a ton. What I love, Enrico, is that I get a ton of personal emails from people. Yeah. You know, I put, I put my phone number on the site. Um, I put my phone number on my email signature. And I didn't know if people were actually going to call. But I get phone calls from all over the U.S., all over the world, people yeah. just calling to say hi, people calling with particular questions about what to buy, what the rules and regulations are, um, what the commercial opportunities are. I'm getting right. a lot of questions about, well, you know, I'm interested in doing real estate photography and videography, but I read this really cool article about roof inspections. Is that something I could do too? Yeah. So I end up having all these great conversations and you know, I work, I work out of my home office. I used to work in a big office, and I love water cooler talk and grabbing lunch with people, but I work solo now, so it's so great when my community reaches out, and I end up being on the phone for two or three hours a day, and I feel like I'm really, um, really a part of something, which has been nice. And that's really the issue, isn't it? Because it's, there's this lack of information and community. It's not the technology. It's not the innovation. It's not the things that drones can do. They can do amazing things, mm -hmm. but there's this huge... Um, um, uh, space between what drones can do and the knowledge that is required to do those things. And, and there's very few resources out there currently beyond doing a YouTube search for mm -hmm. folks to be able to figure things out. So your program, your educational program has various components to it. And I've, I've looked at a lot of the videos and they're really good, but tell the folks out there, what kinds of educational materials you are providing? What are the topic areas that they're going to learn about if they sign up uh, for your program? Sure. So right now, I have one training course. And I'll talk a little bit more about what my plans are in the future. But right now, the one training course is called UAV Boot Camp. And it's meant for brand new pilots, people who are just learning how to fly, people who are really interested in the industry mm -hmm. and learning how to establish themselves as a safe, rule abiding pilot. Yeah. So what does that mean? Right now the course has six different modules. The first third of the course is just on safety and rules and regulations. Things like um, you know if you're flying in the US and want to operate commercially it's a little bit different than just flying recreationally. Mm -hmm. Can you fly in a national park in the US? Can you fly over the White House? Probably not, right? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. Definitely not. <laughs> And things like safety. What I, what I love about what's happening with UAV technology is you look at certain units like the 3D Robotics Solo or the DJI Phantom 3 Professional or even the Inspire. You have all these really cool autonomous components where you can pilot it from your phone instead of GPS waypoints and press a couple of buttons and have your drone orbit perfectly 180 degrees around a tower or some kind of fixed object. Right. That's great. But if you skip all of the foundational elements and if you don't understand what it's like to lose a GPS signal in the middle of a flight when you're 200 feet high and maybe uh, you know a few football fields away from you, that's really scary stuff. So the first part of the course is really driving that point home. You know, My three favorite words are safety, safety, safety. Yeah. So really focusing on that. Um, the second part of the course is um, what does it mean to go professional? So if I am interested in becoming a professional drone pilot, what does that mean? What do I need to buy? What are the opportunities? Um, and the opportunities are vast. It's not just basic aerial photography and videography for marketing and promotional purposes, although that's good low-hanging fruit sure. and that's a really good way to build a client base when you're first getting started. But it's, uh, it's industrial inspections. It's search and rescue opportunities, it's construction site mapping and 3D modeling and wildlife management. And every week I'm yeah. reading a new application of UAV technology. And yes, I think certain aspects of this industry are, are faddish and it's fun to think about you know, right. doing this or doing that. And maybe five or ten years from now that, that'll be obsolete. But this, this industry is here to stay and people who are serious about flying drones professionally yeah. Um, should should dive in now because you know you know as well as I do Enrico that only 
what, 22 or 2300 companies right now in the U.S. are, right. are exempt to fly legally. And around the world, I mean, we're still we're seeing these booming uh, communities of professional pilots, but the regulations all over the world are in flux. Yep. And um, in the UK and Canada and Australia and New Zealand and South Africa, I'm just sort of going English speaking countries where the UAV communities sure. are a little more established. But all over the world, this technology is sort of permeating and things are happening. So that's the second part of the course. And then the last part of the course is okay, this is great. But how do I actually learn to fly? That's my biggest yeah, challenge. Yeah. Okay. There. Right. You so figured I'm, it out. You bought your drone. You, you're going to be safe. Now you got to put the sucker in the air and hope that uh, it comes back. Exactly. And I had so many issues learning how to fly. I mean, I, I told you about the experience with the DJI Phantom One. I started from scratch. Yeah. I bought a forty dollar uh, training quadcopter the size of my hand you know yeah uh, with propeller guards and extra batteries you know each battery was a nine or ten minute battery life and I started from scratch and you know I flew two to three times a day for multiple weeks yeah. and I sort of hit a plateau and I wasn't really progressing in my flight training and I was flying mostly indoors because right. it was easier for me and I could do a USB charger on my laptop and I didn't sure. have to put my shoes on and go outside and yep. um, there was no wind considerations or weather considerations so I wanted to master basic orientation indoors first and um, I had a hard time doing it so I sort of took a step back and tried to deconstruct what it means to master basic multi-rotor orientation yeah. and the course is sort of um, a step-by-step -step process for doing that so you know picking picking the drone off of the ground two or three feet rotating left rotating right and then setting it back down right yeah. and practicing that over and over and over again until you can do things like targeted takeoffs and landings yep. and um, you know you can do circle patterns and figure eight patterns and sort of building up to to all of that confidence. So that's what the third part of the training is. And um, what's been so great, and I, I could go on and on, but I'll stop after this. What's been so great is we've gotten a lot of students so far who have gone through this program and given me all sorts of feedback. Right. Alan, this module is great, or we need more on this, or I really think you should add more on this. The thing about these, uh, these, these UAVs is there's so much to learn, right? Yeah. I could create an entire training module just on taking care of your LiPo batteries. I could create an entire series of courses on video and photo post-processing and different workflows. And when you put your Go GoPro footage yeah. into your computer, how to straighten the horizon line, right? Because GoPro has yeah. kind of a side yeah. feel to it. So what I'm struggling with and where my community has really been helping me is what is the next version of the course like? Sure. What's the goal of, of this training long term? But it's been really fun so far. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. You know, we've got uh, maybe a million more drones going to be filling the skies over Christmas. And a percentage of those people are going to want to do more than than take a picture of their yard. You know, they're going to explore the concept of, well, maybe I want to be in a drone business. There's, I talk to them every day just like you do. The, you know, the folks who get a drone and they want to know, can I be a drone business? Can I start a commercial drone enterprise? And what is involved there? And there's, you know, in many ways, it's it's relatively um, straightforward to build your skill set up on flying the drone. If you dedicate yourself to it, you can get those skills. The regulatory side is way more complex in in its detail. It once you, it's like anything else in life. Once you do it once, it's not that hard. But mm -hmm. that first time trying to unwind it, how to get your section 333, how to get your end number, you know, how to file a notum, all these different things seem really complex to a novice. And there has to be resources out there for people to figure that stuff out so that mm -hmm. they can do it again in the future. And so there's going to be a lot of people over Christmas who are going to start exploring, do I want to be a commercial drone operator as a side business or a full-time business? And mm -hmm. your course is a great resource for well, is this for me? What is involved? What am I really going to know? have to know? What are the resources that I'm going to have to put into play in order to be able to make a legitimate go at this? And so I commend you for your course. How do people get your course and what does it cost? Sure. So you can find the course at learn.uavcoach.com. And uh, right now the course costs $89. It's lifetime access yep. and you get access to those six modules. It's about 90 minutes of video content right now right. and a ton of, of links and follow-up resources. And another big value of the course is when you purchase it, you get access to our private student community. So right now we've got about 200 students 
and they are posting videos and, and pictures and chatting back and forth about um, you know things like you mentioned like getting your 333 and filing your NOTAM and what to buy and reviews of certain units that they own and people <laughs> this one guy Jeffrey uh, he was one of our first students he posted a video of an impromptu workshop that he built. His daughter had just left the home and either went to college or, 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 or moved somewhere nearby. So he had this empty room. And in the video, he was filming himself. And he said, you know, my wife doesn't even know about this. It's better to beg for forgiveness than ask for permission. And he showed, he showed the whole community his, his workshop. And it was so great. And I love that people are, yeah, I love the, that people are willing to sort of pull back the curtain and, and share their lives. Because I think, generally speaking, Enrico, you, you and your team are on the phone every single day with people who are looking to get into this industry. Yeah. It's a great community to be part of. I mean, people really are... Is. Are you know we're all geeks, right? We love the yep. technology. I feel like a lot of um, a lot of people, at least in our community, and probably people you've talked to too, um, have backgrounds in, in either aviation yep. or, or a military background or a strong interest in in flight. So there's that component as well. Yep. Um, a lot of guys I talk to are a lot older, you know, in their in their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s. Yeah, you would think and this would be all kids and young people. It is as many 50 year old men mostly men still uh but it's still a lot of older folks who are who are picking up these uh, uavs and and learning to fly yeah i got an email from somebody this morning and he's 82 years old and his son just bought him his first quadcopter and he joined our community because he wants to learn how to fly how cool is that yeah so here i am trying to you know grow my beard and grow my hair i'll make myself look a little older and more established but right. yes uh you know people from from all over i got an email from a, a 15 year old who, whose dad just bought him a quadcopter, and he's on our email list, and he's learning about uh, getting liability insurance for yep. a business he might want to start one day, and it's just really exciting stuff. It's a great industry to be in right now. Awesome. So Alan Perlman, uh, UAVcoach.com. If you're going to go out and buy a drone for your spouse or even your kid, uh, you, should, you should buy a subscription to this training program as part of that gift for your loved one because uh, they're going to love the drone but they're going to need to learn some things in order to fly safe and in order to understand how to fly. And I think I commend you, Alan, for putting this program together. It sure beats trying to go to YouTube and, and vet a bunch of videos, which may or may not be you know, valuable until you get halfway through them and you realize it's time to find the next video. So great job. Uh, again, tell people where they need to go in order to get this. And we really thank you for being on the program today. Sure. Thank you so much, Enrico. And uh, again, the, the website is learn.uavcoach.com. And I wanted to do something special for, for you and your listeners. So if, uh, if you plug in the code drone law pro, mm -hmm. all one word, drone law pro, you'll get 20% off of, uh, of that course. And again, it's lifetime awesome. access. I'm adding a ton more modules. I'm in, I'm in uh, V2 mode right now and there's so much more content I'm going to be adding. I hired a professional videographer. We're going to make the videos look a lot better, get some footage of me, you know, flying a, flying a drone and um, I'm just, I'm so excited. Great. So you pay this one time fee up front and then you keep getting upgrades to the, to the program. Get it for life. And um, I mean, when the, when the, the FAA, at least here in the U.S., when the FAA figures out their new unmanned um, aerial vehicle rules, you know, for small UAS and come up with that aeronautical knowledge exam. I'm going to have tests prepped for that. And awesome. it's just, yeah, lifetime access for all of this. Great deal. Great deal. Alan Perlman, thank you so much for being here today. And we will see you next time on Drone Law Pro. Thanks, Enrico. Enjoy your trip. Will do. You too.